okay in this presentation i am presenting on the topic competency of witnesses hmm. whether a particular persons can be testified can be examined in the court proceedings or not hmm. here we have to see hmm, from sections 118 hmm, to 121 hmm. in this presentations i am presenting from section 118 to 121 hmm. this section uh, deals about the provisions for the competency of witnesses hmm. now at first uh, you see sections 118 hmm. under these sections uh, it gives the general explanations hmm. general general provisions for the competency of witnesses hmm. it uh, provides about uh, who may testify hmm. here according to these sections two concepts are given here hmm. at first all persons shall be competent to testify hmm. if uh, they are hmm, understanding the questions put to them hmm, and uh, if uh, they can give the rational answer whatever the question put to them in front of the court in front of the judiciary in front of the magistrate in front of the judge hmm. and one another concept is hmm. here the court has a uh, authority to prevent uh, such persons from testifying from giving evidence before the court proceedings hmm. if uh, they are Mm. due to uh, tender years that is the young age mm. or extreme old age uh, or disease mm. whether of body or mind mm. or any other cause of this same kind mm. if they could not understand the questions put to them mm and if they cannot give the rational answers before the court before the magistrate before the judge mm, before the judiciary mm, under these grounds such persons can be prevented from testifying or giving evidence before the court proceedings mm, yeah that's why the sections 118 this is the general provisions for the testifications of the witnesses you have to remember about this mm. here now under these sections here the concepts of the lunatics mm. concepts of the children concept of the unshown persons witnesses are included here these sections provided Hmm. A lunatic persons, a children, or a person of unsound minds, who are mentally abnormal persons, hmm. they can uh, become the witnesses. They can be testified before the court proceedings hmm. if uh, they can understand the questions put to them, and if they can give the rational answers before the court proceedings relating to the facts in issue and relating to the disputed facts whatever the proceedings going on in the court and in which case they have been summoned to give a witnesses in relation to this 
person issue if they have a, they have personal knowledge if they have been acquainted with this particular fashion issue what they have been forced by their own changes whatever they have been hurt whatever they have been changed whatever they have perceived by their own five senses then these persons can be competent witnesses hmm. if they can uh, understand the questions put to them and if they can give the rational answers before the court proceedings hmm. that is now the sections uh, 119 here these sections uh, provide about the dumb witness mm. dumb witness that means who is unable to speak mm. who have no voice that is uh, here this section 119 of the indian evidence Act. it is expressly given that a dumb witness he shall be a competent witness he can be testified before the court proceedings hmm. here whatever he can make intelligible himself before the court proceedings hmm. whether it may be by written explanations written presentations or by signs that means by some visible indications or by some gesture that is some gesture or motions used to communicate before the court proceedings hmm. yeah that's why this uh, section 119 expressly provided that the uh, dumb witnesses they can uh, give the evidence by the way of written presentations by the way of uh, visible indications hmm, by special gestures or motions by which they can communicate the court hmm, that is and this uh, way of testifying or giving evidence of the such dumb witnesses are considered as the oral evidence that is hmm. That means uh, the direct evidence, whatever they have seen, whatever they have heard, whatever they have perceived by their own senses. Hmm. That is. Here, section 119, we got a clear concept. Now, the section 120, hmm. it provides about the parties uh, to civil suits specifically specifically for the husband and wife or in criminal prosecutions specifically for the husband and wife hmm. under this section 120 provides about this here for this to civil suit and uh, their wives or husbands hmm. husbands or wife of persons under criminal prosecutions yeah this section 120 it provides that hmm, the husbands or wife they can be competent witness against each other in civil proceedings hmm. here in case of the divorce act hmm, for everybody for the dissolution of marriages whatever they have made uh, petitions with each other mm. under the sharp clouds mm. that is in this cases whatever they have made, made petitions for the importance like the grounds importance leprosy mm. venereal disease mm. and the Presumed diet, eh. 
and a cruelty. Hmm. What if under the grounds they have been made petitions for divorce against each other between the husbands and wife? Hmm. Under these conditions, they can uh, become the plaintiff and defendants, and they can uh, give depositions. They can be testify. They can be give evidence against each others. Hmm. And under sections one twenty five of the Criminal Procedure Code, hmm, for the maintenance of wives and children. Hmm. Here also, the husbands or wife, they can be testify against each other. Hmm. They can be give evidence against each other. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but in criminal prosecutions, here, the husbands or wife, they can be competent witness hmm, against any persons. Hmm. But they cannot be testified against with each other. Mm. That is against the interest of themselves. They cannot be testified. You have to be very clear about this. Against any persons, they can be competent witnesses. But if the proceedings is against their interest between the husbands and wife in these cases they cannot be testified they cannot be given evidence mm, it is here you see uh, the supreme court held that mm, evidence of his wife could not be received even for corroborating other evidence against the husband mm. If the interest goes against the husbands, in these cases, the wife cannot be testified. Hmm. The wife cannot be given evidence for corroborating some evidence which goes against the interest of her husbands. You have to be very clear about this. Hmm. But the accused person's wife can be testified against any persons that is uh, you have to be clear about this concept here and uh, and this moment of testifications the magistrate uh, judges or court they have to be very conscious hmm, that the section 122 that is the privileged communications it must be complied with. Mm. It cannot be compelled to disclose whatever the direct conversations between the husbands and wife. Mm. Yeah, these privileged communications must be protected mm. while testifying either the husbands or wife in criminal prosecutions. Mm. Yeah, we got the clear concept. Of this section 120. Now, next section is section 121. Hmm. Here, this section 121 it provides for the judges and magistrates. Whether the judge, judges and magistrates they can be testified, whether they shall be a competent witness before the court proceedings or not here these sections expressly provide that here judges and magistrates they shall be competent witness but with the prior permissions of the superior court from which course they are subordinates it is uh, they have to get permissions from the superior court mm, that is from which courts they are sharp ordinates. Here, this. Mm. Yeah. this section reads that no judge or magistrate shall accept upon the special order of some court to which uh, he is sharp ordinate. Mm. Be compelled to ensure 
any questions as to his own conduct in court hmm. as such just or a magistrate or as to anything which came to his knowledge in court as such just or magistrate hmm. but he may be examined as to other matters which occurred in his presence while he was so acting here it is expressly given what about the judges and magistrates they have sins hmm. while they have been uh, presiding as a judge or a magistrate hmm. about the particular facts whatever they have been acquainted with this hmm. about this they can uh, shall be competent witness but one condition is this with the formation of the superior court hmm. from which their subordinates there is hmm. here uh, for instance illustrations you see here number one illustrations for this section 121 here it given that a on his trial before the court of sessions says that a deposition was improperly taken by b the magistrate hmm. b cannot be compelled to answer questions as to this hmm. except upon the special order of a superior court here this illustration provides states here if the parties to the shoot if the parties to the case if they have been arrested here the magistrate he has been uh, taken improperly the evidence uh, the depositions of the witnesses hmm. that is in these cases whatever the allegations against the magistrate hmm, he can be testified as witnesses regarding this issue whatever parties they have arrested he has been taken improperly the depositions by the witnesses hmm. here this uh, magistrates can be called as witnesses with the prior permission to the superior court hmm. from which they are sharp ordinance here number two illustrations you see a is accused before the court of sessions of having given false evidence before b hmm. a magistrate here b cannot be asked what a said except upon the special order of the superior court here now next illustrations it says about the giving the false evidence if the parties to the case if uh, they have been arrested hmm, before the magistrate before the court hmm, <coughs> some particular witnesses they have been given the false evidence hmm. in these cases whatever the magistrate hmm, he have to record it is this magistrate regarding this issue uh, shall be competent witness hmm. but uh, one condition is that with the prior permission to the superior court hmm. from which such magistrates or court is subordinates hmm. and next illustration you see for section 121 here a is accused before the court of session of attempting to murder a polish official hmm. while on the trial before b a session just hmm. b may be examined as to what occurred here in this illustrations it says that here at the moment of the trial before the court of sessions hmm. here if the accused persons attempting attempting to murder 
the police officer that is the investigating investigating officer io hmm. well he has been testifying as a witnesses hmm. here in these cases at this moment if the accused persons attempts to murder such police officer hmm. regarding this uh, facts what about the session just hmm. he have been seen regarding this incident he shall be a competent witness before the court hmm. that is the session just shall be examined regarding this uh, faction issue whatever they whatever this session just he have seen such incident hmm. here section 121 expressly provides provides that judges and magistrates they shall be competent witness but uh, with the prior permissions of the superior court from which they are subordinates here after this we have been clearly discussed hmm, about the competency of witnesses whether the some particular persons can we testify before the court proceedings or no hmm. here in this presentations we have been discussed about the uh lunatic witness child witness and sound mind persons who are mentally who are mentally abnormal witnesses hmm. whether can be testify or not hmm. and uh, we have discussed about the dumb witnesses who are unable to speak hmm. and we have been discussed uh, about the a husband and wife hmm. uh, in the civil proceedings or criminal proceedings whether they can uh, be competent witness against each other or not hmm. and uh, judges and magistrates they shall be competent witness or not hmm. up to this we have clearly discussed hmm. i think uh, we have got a clear concept about these provisions under this topic competency of witness okay that's all mm.